This particular title is called What Do Living Things Need? We found over the last couple years that um, you know, this technology, I mean, it's not such a obvious, easy thing. And we have a lot of teachers call us up and they say, well, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? Um, which I think is, they have like this legitimate sense of, of confusion. Um, and, um, pe you know, there's a lot of people that are confused about how to use these various digital digital tools in the classroom. So um, I'd like to just kind of demonstrate um, one possible way uh, to go about using these resources. But before they do it, I want to say this is not like a, it's not a curriculum. It's not a textbook. It's a system, a, a series of resources that are very flexible and they're designed with flexibility in mind to kind of use how you how you want to and to where you want to. There's not like a specific scope and sequence. Like I, we get teachers calling somebody and say, well, what am I supposed to teach first? It's like, well, you know, <laughs> that's kind of your call, you know. Um, so um, these days, people are very standards driven and we have these new standards in Vermont, the Next Generation Science Standards, and well over half of the states in the country have adopted these. Um, and Vermont adopted them with absolutely no changes at all in, I think, June of 2013. So um, I wanted to start with a standard, and that's how I think most people should start. They should start with, with a standard or a concept that they want to teach. So this particular uh, con concept is uh, from the Vermont Standards, and it's in the unit kind of called Organization for Matter and Energy Flow in Organisms. And the standard says, all animals need food in order to live and grow. They obtain their food from plants or other animals. Plants need water and light to live and grow. And that's from kindergarten. So, no, it's not anywhere there. I'm just telling you, I just, I selected this, this idea, this concept from the, um, Vermont standards. Okay, it's scientific. And it's kindergarten. So I'm, you know, so I think it's pretty rigorous for kindergarten. So, um, so if you know that you have to teach that in kindergarten, you have to then go and select one of these units uh, that um, teaches this content. And in the teacher's guide, in the teacher's section, there is there's some ideas for introducing the program. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna, if you want to look at it, the guide we handed out is on page five at the top. So if we want, if I wanted to start this lesson with the kids, I might say, I want all of you to start this lesson by holding your breath for 10 seconds. Ready, set, go. Okay. Okay. What did you feel after you held your breath? What did you have a need to do? Breathe. Breathe. Yeah. Why? We need air to live, right? Okay. It's a really an important thing that we all need. Do animals need it? Yes. Do plants need it? Okay. No. Yeah. Everything needs to breathe. What else do we need? Food. Food. Did everyone eat breakfast this morning? Lunch? Okay. What else did you take into your body besides some food? Water, something to drink. Okay. So this would be a good kind of way to start kids thinking about what do living things, including us, need. Okay. The next thing you might want to do is you could give them the pre-assessment, the, the ten-question pre-assessment. Okay. And that is on um, page ten. Okay. Multiple choice test. I've seen teachers do this as a group and just kind of go through these things and, and it's a good way to start teaching the vocabulary that's, that's in this particular concept. Or you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Okay. Another thing that you might want to do before you actually show a particular video clip is to um, talk about this idea of where people live. Say, well, where do you where do you live? Where do you live, Mr. Lawrence? Besides Otter Valley? Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you live in a, a house. A house. Okay. If you're in the city, some kids are going to say they live in an apartment. Okay. So we people live in in things with buildings and four walls around them. Okay. What about um, a deer? Where does a deer live? In my yard. In your yard, <laughs> eating your flowers. Okay. So we're going to get across this idea of different things live in different places. 
And you might want to write the word on the board shelter and talk about what shelter is. Okay. So after you've done those things, you can show a video clip. So a lot of teachers, are that's how they're teaching now. They're using clips. They're trying to get away from showing an entire video. So it, it's a lot harder work, I think, to go and choose your two or three clips that you want to show in a classroom period because you kind of have to be scripted. And you have to know, you know what the clips are and where you're going to integrate them instead of just showing an entire video. But I think this interface makes it a lot easier. So we're going to watch this clip called The Place to Live. Most people live in houses, apartments, or other buildings. The place we live gives us shelter. It protects us from bad weather. It's a place that we can sleep, eat, and live. All living things need a place to live. You decide. Where do fish live? So you could stop the video right here, and it's pretty obvious, but the kids will say, well, they, they live in a pond or a river or a lake. Fish live in bodies of water, such as ponds, lakes, streams, rivers, or oceans. Animals like bears live in the forest. Bison live in grasslands. Birds live part of their lives in the air. Plants can live in soil and in water. Everything needs a place to live. So after showing that clip, you might want to go over this activity which is on page 13. Keep in mind, this is kindergarten, first, sec first second grade, you know, little kids. And this activity involves two things. It involves having them look at some animals or plants and deciding which type of environment they live in, okay? And the other thing it involves is to describe the home of this living thing, okay? So one way, you could photocopy this and hand it out to kids, or you could just do it on screen, or you could call up the Teacher's Guide page right here, and you could talk about it. Um, if you hand out this, they could draw a line to the habitat, um, and then they could maybe have a few keywords about, well, what's the, what is this, this sand dune? Well, this is a desert. What's it like in the desert? It's dry. There's not much rain. It's often windy and hot. Okay, not always, but quite often. Okay, so this is tying in the ELA and, you know, the English language arts and the vocabulary words. If you do it in small groups, they can talk about it amongst themselves. So they're getting them, their speaking skills. And if you want them to write, start writing complete sentences, you get their writing skills in. So you can really go this way with it, okay? So this is just a tool to help teachers do this. It's kind of like a stepping stone. So you could end the lesson right there. So it might take 15, 20 minutes or something to do that. If you wanted to keep going, um, that same day, you could um, talk about some other things that living things need, such as water and food. You can see that there's clips. Um, there's a clip on water, there's a clip on food, there's a clip on air. And um, you could then do these activities on page 14 and 15. So this is tying right to the standard, because the standard talks about what do plants need. So this one on page 14 is all about what the plant needs. And then on 15 is what does this deer need? to survive. So, you know, the deer needs air and water and grass to eat. So, once again, you can have kids write and talk about these things and use the vocabulary appropriately in their discussions and writing. So, just an example of how you can use uh, these products, um, you know, in your science lessons and particularly for you elementary and primary teachers, how you can integrate them into your, your reading and language arts program.